Hello everyone. Welcome back to another lesson. We are on lesson 15 today, which is all still reading Fragile Frogs. If you've forgotten, I'm Miss Wagers and I will be helping you out today. So let's go ahead and jump right into our lesson. We're not going to waste any time. Ribbit, ribbit. Okay, for just a second of time. Okay, all the frogs. Oh, frogs are really not my favorite. I won't touch one. So don't make me try. So our learning intentions for today. We are learning to examine different causes and effects in a text so that we can have a better understanding of what we're reading. Because, you know, cause and effects, effect, that's a text structure that we need to know about. So we know we are successful when we can explain cause and effect and identify a cause and its effect or effects in the text. So sometimes there is more than one effect to a cause. Bum, bum, bum. So our foundational skill for today is still thinking about those suffixes OR and ER, which remember mean a person who. So we will identify the base word and the suffix of these words. So first let's read the words aloud. I'm gonna use my little pointer tool. We have actors, announcer, believer, cleaner, conductor, performer, speaker, tuners. Okay, so then again, if we are identifying the base word and the suffix, then the base word of actors is going to be act and the suffix is OR. If we do announcer, the base word would be announce and the suffix is ER. Okay, and then one more example, if we have conductor, the base word would be conduct and then the suffix is this OR. Okay, so I will leave you there. Hey, okay, there is a practice reader that you can practice reading to get better at words with O-R and E-R because anytime you come across these suffixes, you should know exactly what sound they are making. So let me turn off my pointer and we will move on. So our vocabulary for the day. Altitudes, page, which we will find on page nine, which is the height of an object or a point in relation to sea level or ground level. So the reason we have this picture of the clouds is because that when you are riding in an airplane or the clouds are at a high altitude, they are very high off the ground. And then vulnerable, page 10 is susceptible to harm. Okay, so we have the picture of the baby here because you have to be very careful with the baby, especially with their head. We've always talked about because it's still vulnerable because all those skull pieces haven't gone together yet. Okay, so it could be vulnerable or susceptible to harm if you weren't careful. So let's go ahead and get to reading and then we will do our stop and think question. So deformed frogs appeared too. In 1995, middle school students in Minnesota found frogs, some frogs near a farm. They were juvenile leopard frogs, just like the ones Tyrone studies. Many of the Minnesota frogs had missing legs or shriveled red legs or legs that didn't bend. It was strange and scary. People began finding deformed frogs in many other places too. What is happening to the world's amphibians? The answer isn't simple. Amphibians decline. Amphibian decline has many causes. Since the 1980s, the citrid, or pronounced chytrid, sorry, chytrid fungus has spread around the world. The disease is killing amphibians in North America, Central America, South America, and Australia. To make matters work, worse, global warming seems to cause temperatures, seems to cause temperatures that help the fungus, that help the fungus, da da da. Okay, and on the left, it says we have a blue poison dart frog that lives in South America. And below we have the leopard frog was caught by a child in Reedsburg, Wisconsin. It has an extra leg growing out of its chin. Other deformed frogs were found in the same place. Okay, so we see he's just got this extra leg hanging out here. That's, I don't think that's helpful actually. What would you think if you had a leg growing out of your chin? Ugh. A deadly fungus that threatens frogs was first discovered in the blue poison dart frog above and the white tree frog shown on page nine. So that deadly fungus was first found in one of the blue poison dart frogs. So our stop and think question is how does the author make it clear what the topic of the session will be about? Hmm. Let's 
stop and think. Did you say it has to do with deformed frogs? Okay, because it starts right up here at the top and it's talking about deformed frogs appeared too. And immediately they start talking all about deformed frogs and then they have a picture of a deformed frog here. Okay, so that's how the author is helping to make clear. So it's talking about these deformed frogs and then it has picture a picture to support that as well. So let's go back for a second because we left off in the middle of a sentence. To make matters worse, global warming it seems to cause temperatures that help fungus spread. Though scientists in New Zealand believe they've discovered a chemical that kills the fungus, finding and treating wild frogs can be very difficult. Some species of frogs live at high altitudes or are threatened by ultraviolet UV radiation. Man-made chemicals have thinned the ozone layer in our atmosphere. The Earth's ozone layer keeps most of these damaging UV rays from reaching us. At high altitudes, the air is thinner. And, and if thin air is combined with a thin ozone area, even more UV radiation reaches the Earth. High levels of UV radiation can kill the delicate, shellless eggs of an amphibians that live in mountain areas. Amphibians are also threatened by introduced species. An introduced species is a creature that shows up somewhere that isn't that it isn't normally found. The bullfrog is a kind of frog that isn't declining. It's native to the eastern and midwestern parts of the United States. It has been introduced by humans in ponds and streams all over the west. Introduced bullfrogs gobble up smaller native frogs and take over their habitat. Sometimes fish are introduced into lakes and streams so that fishermen will have something to catch. The non-native fish usually have a taste for native tadpoles. Often, a frog species faces not just one threat, but many. California's red-legged frog has been hit by a truckload of problems, problems, habitat loss, fungal disease, and introduced bullfrogs and fish. And if that weren't enough, red-legged frogs are also killed by pesticides sprayed on crops in California's Central Valley. The pesticides are blown by the wind air into the foothills where many of the remaining frogs live. And here is that white tree frog that's found in Australia. So our stop and think question this time is how does the author explain that frogs living at higher altitudes may be more at risk than other species? Okay, so let's look back in the text for this. Okay, and I'm sorry the text is kind of small here. Okay, we're doing our best. Okay, so how does the author explain that frogs living at higher altitudes may be at more risk than other species? So I remember it was talking about altitudes right here, and I'm skimming. I can see this word, the word altitude right here in the text, so that lets me know that that's, this is probably a good area for me to start reading. And remember, altitude just means like farther off the ground or like above sea level, okay? Because sometimes like mountains, they're considered a high altitude, but it's because they're higher up. Like think about altitude as being closer to the sky. So if you're on top of the mountain, you're at a higher altitude because you're closer to the sky than if you are in a valley or, you know, here in Kansas. So, or at the bottom of the mountain. So let's think, how are they at a higher risk? Some species of frogs living at high altitudes are threatened by ultraviolet UV radiation. Man-made chemicals have thinned the ozone layer in our atmosphere. The Earth's ozone layer keeps most of these damaging UV rays from reaching us. At high altitudes, the air is thinner, and if the air, thin air is combined with a thin ozone area, even more UV radiation reaches the Earth. High levels of UV radiation can kill the delicate, shellless eggs of amphibians that live in mountain areas. Okay, so right here, this paragraph is how the author is explaining to us how frogs that are, that are living at higher altitudes are at more risk. Okay, so imagine if a frog is living at the top of a mountain, which does happen, or even like on the mountains. Okay, they're now at a higher altitude. And if the ozone layer, which is a big protective bubble around the earth, has thinned out, that means more UV radiation. That basically means like the sun rays, the sun's rays, more of them are getting through, which can be dangerous to the frogs. Okay, because imagine they just kind of have that thin, wet skin and their eggs, they don't have a shell on them or anything. So it can make it very dangerous 
and difficult for frogs to reproduce and have more and create more frogs, have babies. And those scary frog deformities, scientists found that some frog, and those scary frog deformities, scientists found that some frog deformities are caused by a parasite. The parasite is a worm that burrows under a tadpole's skin and disrupts the tadpole's growth. It may present a leg, it may prevent a leg from growing or cause deformed legs. Pesticides such as atrazine make frogs more vulnerable to parasites, and pesticides can also cause strange frog deformities. Sometimes those deformities aren't as obvious as missing or shriveled legs, yet hidden deformities can still harm frogs. That's what Tyrone found when he tested frogs exposed to atrazine. Okay, and again, these frogs, remember, they're vulnerable, so we have the baby because you have to be very careful. Okay, and here we have some pictures with some captions, so let's see. So right here, it says bullfrogs are aggressive and prey on other frogs. Like all amphibians, bullfrogs are cold-blooded. That means that the temperature inside their body changes as the outside temperature changes. In this picture below, and the bullfrog, let's go back. This is the bullfrog that they're talking about, because since this would normally be a book that opens up Sometimes things, things get cut off a little bit. But this one here, a bell's horn frog gulps down a newborn mouse below. It is sometimes called the Pac-Man frog after the munching video game creature. Instead of chasing its prey, the Pac-Man sits and waits like a web-footed web couch potato. So it just sits and waits for something to come. And here he's got a little baby mouse. Ooh. So. Oh, let's get that frog off my screen for a minute and talk about cause and effect. So an effect is what happens and a cause is why something happens. Okay, so a cause is why something happens and the effect is what we call what actually happened. Okay, so some texts are organized with cause and effect text structures. Okay, so when the author is saying this happened and then this is why and then this happened and this is why and this happened and this is why, that's a cause and effect text structure. Okay, so let's talk about some causes and effects. Okay, so we have right here, the chytrid fungus spreads and kills amphibians. The effect, well, there's fewer amphibians living in the world. Okay, so that's one thing that the author talked to us about. Then another set, it says global warming and temperature changes, that's the cause. And it says deadly fungus spreads more easily. So let's go back and look at that in the text where they are talking about these temperature changes. Oh, yep, no, I was on the right page. Right here, got it now. Sorry guys, I'm pointing at my own screen. You can't see that. To make matters worse, global warming seems to cause temperature changes. And notice this word right here, cause. Global warming seems to cause temperature change, temperature that help fungus spread, okay? And so with that, they've talked about the fungus. It says that the, ugh, They've discovered a chemical and that kills the fungus, but finding and treating the wild frogs would be very difficult, and that fungus kills the frogs. Ooh. Back to where we were at. Okay, so, and then the last cause and effect is it's difficult, like we just said, to find and treat the wild frogs. So, again, the same um, effect, the deadly fungus spreads more easily. So, as we just said, Okay, so global warming causes that temperature change that makes it easier for the fungus to spread because the warmer weather is better for that fungus. And then it's easier for it to spread as well because it's hard to find and test all these frogs to see if they've gotten this fungus so they could fix, um, fix them. But, you know, imagine just going and trying to catch wild frogs to, you know, test them and then being like, oh, nope, you're fine. You can go or, oh, no, we, we need to treat you. Okay, like the frogs don't understand that. Okay, so cause and effect. This happened, okay, so this is the result, or this is going on, so this is the result. So your reading response today is going to be complete this graphic organizer with two causes and two effects that can be found on page nine. Okay, so you'll put two causes, 
and two effects. So the effect is going to be the result of the cause, what happened because of it. Okay, so we can go back and look at page nine. Whoop. Page nine, right here. Okay, so you will base it off of this page, and I have included that in the seesaw activity. Okay, so you can look back at this page, or if you want, go back and re-listen to Miss Wager's reading it for you, because that way you don't have to read it on your own, which you're listening listening or looking for two causes and effects. Okay, so what happens and why? Okay, we've kind of already talked about one if you're real sneaky. All right, guys, so that is your reading response question for today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you all later. Bye.